had uh, uh, very uh, definitive information, uh, 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 only a bit of which we put out publicly, that uh, showed that they were engaged in this classified uh, secret effort uh, to, to develop these super viruses. Uh, and that, uh, uh, that, well, it appeared that it had spilled out of that laboratory, and that was the only plausible information that we were presented. David Asher, who you've seen here on Fox News at Night, a State Department investigator who led the probe into the origins of COVID-19, telling our own Martha McCallum earlier today that he was never presented with proof that the virus originated in nature. So tonight, there's growing interest in this theory that the virus instead emerged from the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. Here now to discuss that with us, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo joining us tonight from Tel Aviv. Great to have you back. Shannon, it's great to be with you again. I want to give you a chance to respond to the suggestion from, among other people, Maggie Haberman over at The New York Times, um, that you and President Trump were at some, it seems suggested that you all were at fault, that this lab leak theory didn't get more traction last year or that it was shut down. Here's her explanation. President Trump and Mike Pompeo, uh, the uh, Secretary of State, both suggested they had seen evidence that this was formed in a lab, and they also suggested it was not released on purpose, but they refused to release the evidence showing what it was. And so because of that, that made this instantly political. Your response? Oh, poor, poor Maggie. Uh, Maggie made this political. We didn't. Uh, as you heard from Mr. Asher, you've heard from the entire team that was working on this. this Shannon, this was, this was about science. This was about getting it right. This was about protecting the American people. We knew immediately, as early as January of 2020, that we had a, a shutout going on, that Chinese Communist Party was going to shut us out from the information that we needed so that we could respond to this pandemic in the right way. And so we, the team uh, that uh, David Asher was talking about, the State Department, and that Maggie Haberman just trashed them, the professionals at the State Department, we, we knew we were doing the right thing. We were working on it. Every place along the way, we released as much information as we possibly could, consistent with classification requirements. I'm really proud of the work we did. There's still an awful lot to do to figure out how we make sure this doesn't happen again. There are a number of ongoing investigations. There are calls for international bodies to get more involved. They say they've done that. Some of them have done it with minimal access or no access or, or no help from China. But I want to read something that comes to us from the State Department now under the Biden administration it says there's been incorrect reporting. This is a spokesperson, Ned Price, that the Biden-Harris administration shut down an investigation by the State Department's Bureau of Arms Control and Verification into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic. That reporting is incorrect. They say in February and March of 2021, the team's findings were briefed to ABC and policy planning staff in the new administration. With the report delivered, the work was ended. Is that a fair assessment? You know, I can't say exactly what happened in the Biden administration, so I don't want to get into a process argument or a words argument with them. What, what I've seen to date is that they have not done the hard work that needs to be done. This information is in the possession of the Chinese Communist Party. And, President Biden has a responsibility to raise this every time he talks with Xi Jinping. You know, Shannon, we've talked about this laboratory, this Wuhan Institute of Virology, from which the Wuhan virus may well have escaped. The Chinese Communist Party knows the answer to that. President Biden has a responsibility to ask Xi Jinping and demand that he does this. They're still engaged. They're still engaged in this kind of virus research at that very laboratory. And from what I've seen, there's been no changes in the safety protocols there either. Uh, this bio-risk is real. It could happen again next time, Shannon. It could be 30 million in the people, 30 million people in the world that die. We have to get to the bottom of this and we have to impose cost on the Chinese Communist Party until they share the answers with the world. They know the answers. Yeah, the world deserves those. You're there in Israel. Uh, you have had strong working relationships throughout the Trump administration in your service uh, in that region of the world. I'm going to read something from the new Secretary of State, uh, Anthony Blinken. Uh, it says Secretary of State Tony Blinken warned Israeli leaders, this was in Axios yesterday, on his visit to Jerusalem this week that evictions of Palestinian families from East Jerusalem or further unrest on the Temple Mount could spark renewed tension, conflict, and war. It says um, he was stern with the Israeli leaders. Um, what do you make of the U.S.-Israeli relationship in this uh, very tense moment? Well, Shannon, a couple of things. I remember so well the Trump administration was warned if we made changes to U.S. policy that there'd be the tensions, the war, the violence that uh, Mr. Blinken suggested there. When we moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, when we uh, allowed the Golan Heights to be properly recognized as Israel's right to occupy them, 
Um, when, when we did those things, there wasn't war. When we made clear that some of these settlements were lawful, there wasn't war. Indeed, what happened is when this administration cozied up to the Iranians, when this administration sits at the table with the very entity, the regime in Iran, that is underwriting Hamas, we get missiles in the very place I'm sitting today. We need a policy that works closely with our Israeli friends, with our Gulf state friends, that isolates Iran in a real way. That's good diplomacy. I hope this administration will adopt those same policies that will keep people here in Tel Aviv and throughout Israel safe, and it'll secure American freedom as well. The, it is a difficult region. Um, you all had significant accomplishments with the Abraham Accords. Uh, this administration says uh, they hope to build and better the relationships there as well. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, thank you for your time. Thank you, Shannon. Great to be with you. So long.